Hello everyone, I am the Meditator Kirby, and welcome to my channel, The Commander Tavern. The Commander Tavern is a channel dedicated to my favorite Magic the Gathering format. The Brewery is a series on this channel showcasing my spicy brews and other deck techs. On this episode of The Brewery, I will be discussing my take on a Commander from Core Set 2021, Rinin Seri Inseparable. If you like this deck or any of the cards I'll be mentioning throughout the video, please consider using my TCG Player affiliate link when purchasing those cards. You can find that link down in the description. It'll really help out the channel. Other ways you can help support the channel with my Patreon. Patrons get early access to scheduled videos on YouTube and higher tier patrons get access to the VIP section of my Discord server as well. You can find a link to that down in the description too. Alright, let's get back to the episode. Rin and Seri is a 4-4 dog cat for 1 generic, 1 red, 1 green, and 1 white. They create a 1-1 dog creature token whenever you cast a cat spell and a 1-1 cat creature token whenever you cast a dog spell. Now, there aren't as many dogs as cats and those that exist, the good ones, are few and far in between. That being said, casting a lot of cats will get you a lot of dogs which is important for their activated ability. For red, green, white, and tapping, they deal damage to any target equal to the number of dogs you control and you gain life equal to the amount of cats you control. Naturally, you want to send the damage to an opponent's face. That being said, the deck is focused on cats and dogs not just to activate Ren and Siri, but to go aggro as well in order to not completely depend on the commander. That being said, we can further abuse this final ability with Rings of Brighthearth and Illusionist Bracers. For an additional cost of 2 generic mana, you double their effect thanks to the rings. The Bracers do it for free, but they have to be equipped onto Ren and Siri. These go great in really making the most of this ability. The same can also be achieved with Seaborn Muse. Being able to untap everything each turn means being able to activate Rin and Seri at the beginning of each end step while also leaving up your horde for blocking just in case. And this is where the cat-dog tribal aspect of the deck comes into play. Sure, Rin and Seri are great at creating tokens and dealing a lot of damage to a single target, but the deck won't solely depend on this. It's just a synergistic aspect of it in the command zone. For example, Irregular Cohort, Universal Automaton, and Toriel Mauler are great at creating tokens because being changelings means that they're both a cat and a dog spell. The Cohort is crazy since it creates both types of tokens and then the Shapeshifter token it creates is both creature types as well. Taurian Mauler is great beater in the deck since it gets insanely huge unless dealt with, especially in multiplayer games. White Mane Lion and Fleetwood Panther also have the potential of creating an insane amount of tokens since they can be cast to create a dog token and then you can just bounce itself to its enter the battlefield trigger. Not only that, but doing so is also a repeatable way to trigger other cards that care about creatures entering the battlefield, but we're going to see those later on. Release the Dogs isn't a dog spell per se, but it creates 4 1 1 dog creature tokens for just 4 mana, which is great since we want lots of dog tokens on the battlefield in order for Ren and Siri to deal as much damage as possible. Nakano War Pride makes a ton of cat tokens when it attacks since it creates a token of itself for each creature an opponent controls. Activating Rin and Seri before these tokens leave the battlefield is an amazing way to gain a ton of life when you're in a pinch. That being said, Nakano War Pride also helps in clearing the way of blockers since all clones have to be blocked. That way you can swing in unopposed with your army, which we'll soon see in a bit. Parallel Lives, Anointed Procession, and Doubling Season make these effects even crazier since they double the amount of tokens being created. Doubling Season also doubles the amount of counters placed on our permanents which isn't the main point of the deck, but it helps in doubling plus one plus one counters our creatures get as well as the amount of quest counters on Beastmaster Ascension. Speaking of which, in order to make the most of our creatures, not just to boost Ren and Seri's damage dealing ability, we can pump our horde of cats, dogs, and other creatures to overtake the table and win via tons of damage. Beastmaster Ascension, as I just mentioned, is one just card. Swinging in with just 7 weenies is enough to then pump our entire army plus 5 plus 5. We can pump creatures when they attack thanks to Bolt Hound and Shared Animosity. Bolt Hound is included more for the synergy since it's a dog and creates a cat token thanks to our commander. However, it pumps all our creatures plus 1 plus 0 when it attacks, so it's also useful for our aggro strategy. As for Shared Animosity, the deck is mostly cats so the tokens are mostly dogs, meaning that we will have more than enough of either to significantly pump themselves when attacking. This might be limited to tribal strategies, but that's fine for this deck. Same goes with Coat of Arms. It should be mentioned that although this makes our deck leagues stronger and more dangerous than normal, the deck isn't purely one creature type. So if you're facing against a much stronger tribal build deck, do not cast it unless you take care of that opponent first because it'll help them more than it'll help you. Gavany Township is a way to sink any excess mana but it also helps when Rin and Siri aren't around. If they've been neutralized then we have to rely even harder on our stompy strategy to get down to business and take the win. As mentioned earlier, these counters get doubled thanks to doubling season. Regal Karakal, King of the Pride, and Feline Sovereign pump our cats which is great since most of the deck is cats and either way, the few dogs in the deck create cats when cast with Rin and Siri out. These also pump our commander in case we're also able to take the win via commander damage. Kahira the Orphan Guard also pumps our cats and give them vigilance which is great in order to be able to attack with Ren and Siri during our turn and then still be able to activate them at the beginning of the end step before our turn. 
However, Kahir also pumps the few beasts and elementals in the deck as a bonus. Pack Leader pumps the few dogs in the deck, but it also pumps all of the dog tokens that the cat spells help create. It is possible to build a deck with mostly cats and elemental dogs to have Kahira be the companion, but after the way companions got severely nerfed, it's better to just include Kahira in the 99 in order to include Pack Leader and other creatures as well, especially since Pack Leader prevents all combat damage to dogs we control whenever it attacks, which is great in a stompy deck like this one. Mirror Entity is perhaps the best way to pump our army but also as a way to create both tokens since it has Changeling. With enough mana and other boosts, the amount of damage this can allow to deal is insane. We can also leave 3 mana open after pumping in order to then activate Ren and Siri to maximize the amount of damage we deal and life we gain. Speaking of maximizing damage, Fiendish Duo and Firing Me Emancipation are included just for that. The former doubles the damage dealt by sources we control and the latter triples that damage. Together they sextuple the damage dealt. Not only are these great to help make Rin and Siri deal considerable amounts of damage with their ability, but also the damage our creatures deal during combat, potentially enough to take out the entire table. With the way the devils are worded, it makes cards like Marisi Breaker of the Quill that much more dangerous. With the amount of creatures we're sending out during combat, even if a single one manages to break through, then all creatures controlled by that opponent are guarded. These creatures then have to attack other players except for you. Not only does this accelerate the game by lowering life totals, but it also leaves those opponents with goaded creatures open to get smacked by more of our creatures. Oh, and Marisi being a cat triggers our commander as well. Same with Miri or the Light Duelist. Whenever she attacks, our creatures can only be blocked by a single creature. This helps our key creatures not get ganged up on. However, more importantly, if she's tapped, only one creature can attack us each combat, meaning we can swing in with all of our creatures and potentially be safe from opponents' own swarms so they can only choose one attacker to attack us. All this being said, perhaps the best pump effect in the deck is Crater Hoof Behemoth. Even with 10 creatures on the board, which is Talos play to achieve in this deck, all of our creatures will get plus 11 plus 11 and trample when it enters the battlefield, including itself. This usually spells doom for any remaining players since casting this is usually mid to late game unless we got really lucky with our draws and our ramp and did this early enough to quickly win the game. We can also use Perforous God of the Forge to further take advantage of Rin and Seri's token creating abilities. Not only will he deal 2 damage to each opponent whenever a creature enters the battlefield under our control, which will totally add up, but he's also a great mana sink to pump our creatures, furthering our aggressive strategy, so he does it all in this deck. Perforos isn't the only way we can take advantage of tokens either. We can also use our tokens to control the board. Our shards and Kosali slingers get rid of pesky fill of fort and stacks effects whenever a creature enters the battlefield. Sure, the slingers trigger when it's a cat, but the deck is mostly cats and if it's a dog being cast, it'll trigger our commander creating that cat that will trigger the slingers. So it's all good. These can also be used to take care of mana rocks in order to slow down our opponent's game. Kasali Pride Mage and Philidar Cub are one-time use ways to deal with these card types but they're cheap enough to be cast early on to trigger our commander and can stick around to deal damage and our chump block until their sacrifice is needed. We can further deal with control archetypes with Cavern of Souls and Prowling Serpapod to prevent our creature spells from being countered. Sure, our commander triggers regardless if the spell was countered or not but we still don't want to have our attackers countered. Cat is the creature type ideally chosen for Cavern of Souls for this deck. Lightning Greaves and Swiftfoot Boots help with targeted effects which is great to protect our commander. Control is the deck's natural enemy since grindier decks might be able to survive enough to then stall the game until they can win with their slow win con, but not if it's hard to get rid of our commander. Sluffless Savior and Bronze Lion Lion are additional ways to protect our commander. The Beagle is a one-time use only effect but it only costs one to cast which is great especially when we want to get as many tokens on the battlefield as possible. The Lion needs to die first but once it does it becomes an aura that can make our commander indestructible. More than just protecting our commander, Teferi's protection, Flawless Maneuver, Boros Charm, and Heroic Intervention give Indestructible to our entire table. Well, Teferi's protection doesn't really give Indestructible, but it takes it a step further by phasing us out until the beginning of our next untap step. Heroic Intervention also gives our board Hexproof as a bonus. Temer Sabretooth can also be used defensively by bouncing any key creature to our hand in response to anything bad, but it can also be used to bounce any creature to then recast to trigger our commander or our other effects like our shards, peripherals, etc especially cards like High Cliff Felidar, because the deck also runs ways of interacting offensively. It might be a bit costly at 7 mana, but it triggers our commander and can also destroy 3 of the highest power creatures on the board. It's also a 5-5 with Vigilance that benefits from all the tribal and global boons in the deck. Beast Within, Generous Gift, and Chaos Warp are catch-alls that can deal with any troublesome permanent all at instant speed and all for 3 mana. These are pretty much the trifecta of spot removal in red-green-white decks, so they're definitely worth a slot here. Crypt Swap is an other excellent 3 cost instant speed removal spell but it's only limited to creatures. The good thing is that it exiles the creature, which is great against Avacyn and other indestructible nuisances. 
The great thing is that it's a changeling, so casting this with Ren and Siri on the battlefield means that it also triggers them, getting us a dog and a cat token when cast, further taking advantage of the dog cat's color identity. Alms Collector, Draneth Magistrate, and Avon Mind Sensor are the hate pieces of the deck. Alms Collector prevents opponents digging through their deck for answers against us while also getting us a card in the process. Avon Mind Sensor shuts them down altogether by preventing them from tutoring for any answers while also nerfing any fetch lands. Draneth Magistrate is just brutal at preventing commanders from being cast from the command zone as well as preventing any spells cast from anywhere else, shutting down graveyard strategies as well as Cascade and any other annoying archetypes that bypass casting cards. On the topic of digging for answers, we need to be able to dig for our own answers and not run out of steam. The deck is running Return of the Wild Speaker as an instant speed way to draw onto a ton of cards when we have a significantly pumped creature. Casting this in response to a grievance or at the beginning of an opponent's end step is super clutch. Keeper of Fables continues providing value through synergy since it is also a cat. Unfortunately, we only draw one card regardless of how many non-human tokens trigger it since it's just one card total instead of one per creature. That would have been amazing. Still, the card is great in the deck for what it is. Beast Whisperer, Guardian Project, The Great Henge, and Vanquisher's Banner all trigger when casting creatures or them entering the battlefield. The Elf and Banner trigger when the creature is cast, keep in mind that the cat should be the creature type chosen for the banner, but the banner has the added bonus of also providing a pump effect. The Project and Henge trigger when the non-token creature enters the battlefield, but the Henge has the added bonus of giving that creature a plus one plus one counter when it enters the battlefield. It also has additional bonuses, such as being able to tap for two life and gain us two green mana. Which brings me to the final section of the deck, the Mana Acceleration. Besides the Great Henge, the deck is also running Soul Ring and Mana Crypt. Rin and Seri only have one generic in its casting cost and no generic in its activation cost, but these are still great for maximizing how many spells we can cast in a single turn, especially to trigger them as often as possible. Farseek, Nature's Lore, and Three Visits are the three cards you know I'm going to be running in this deck. Getting a land turn 2 accelerates this deck so much, especially getting that turn 2 or turn 3 Ren and Siri. We want them out as quickly as possible in order to maximize the effort our creatures do when we cast them. Birds of Paradise is the only one drop mana dork in the deck since the deck has a fairly decent curve save for the very few bombs in the deck. A turn 1 birds is never a bad thing especially in a 3 colored aggro deck like this one. Gaia's Cradle and Growing Rites of Itlamok are insane here especially when Growing Rites of Itlamok transforms into Itlamok Cradle of the Sun. With all the creatures we'll be having on the battlefield since early on, it'll transform fairly quickly. The amount of mana these will generate is insane. This mana can be used to sink into Mirror Entity as well as casting Creative of Behemoth very early on. Even as an enchantment, Itlamok is great as a way to find a creature amongst the top 4 cards when it enters the battlefield, but that's just a bonus since the mana acceleration it provides upon transforming is just too great to ignore. The rest of the deck is just the lands. The deck's running all 10 fetch lands, all 3 dual lands, all 3 shock lands, all 3 pain lands, Command Tower, Mana Confluence, City of Brass, Reflecting Pool, Exotic Orchard, Rift's Grove, and Ancient Tomb, as well as two of each snow-covered basic land in case opponents are running anything that benefits us for it. This brew is just an idea of how to build around Rin and Seri Inseparable. They're definitely an interesting new lord since the dog is now going to be potentially getting more support so this deck will definitely be one that will improve as more time passes, especially if you love building tribal decks. That being said, there are other ways to brew them if you want to think outside of the box. So if you have any ideas, let me know in the comments. If you're interested in the decklist of this spicy brew of mine, you can find a link to it down in the description. I would like to thank all my patrons for supporting me and a quick shout out to all my higher tier patrons, the brewers, for their patronage. I'd also like to thank anyone using my TCG Player affiliate link. That also helps out the channel. And to everyone, thanks for watching this episode of The Brewery on the Commander Tavern. I am Demented Kirby, and happy brewing.